Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at the Reformed Church of Stout. Um, I do have several announcements. Um, first, some health concerns. Um, Kenny Eichenberg uh, continues to uh, struggle, I guess would be the best word. Um, he's really worn out and everything from not only the cancer, but the treatments that he's enduring. So continue to pray for him and his family. Anna Oswigan spent a little time down at Iowa City again this week. Um, just cannot seem to get a handle on what's going on with her body. So um, remember her in your prayers and, and her entire family as they endure that together. Our sympathies go out to Roger and your family and the loss of your sister-in-law. That seemed to come really quick, didn't it? I mean, yeah. So, um, Linda Patton is also um, asking for prayers as she's um, occurring some health issues. And then some other just uh, clerical stuff, I guess. There will be no softball season this year, and the Freedom Fest activities have also been canceled for this year. So um, pray that by next year, hopefully, we're all back to somewhat of a normal schedule. Um, Megan's Open House is Saturday from 11 to 2 at the Vets Building in Parkersburg. So um, come and wish her well on her graduation. And finally, the last thing that I have, a, a note of praise, is Washington Reformed Church called a pastor last Sunday evening, and he accepted. So he's moving in this coming Saturday already. His name is Terry Pullian, I believe is how you pronounce it, P-U-L-L-I-A-N. So um, we give praise to God for that, and we also ask him that that will be blessed as they work together. Does anyone else have anything to announce? If not, we're going to do things a little bit different this morning. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, then I'll have prayer, and then we'll do our opening hymn, My Country Tis of Thee. And I'm going to remind you, as we say, one nation under God, don't put a pause between one nation and under God. Run it all together, okay? And I'll talk a little bit about that. I know, Mary, we, you mentioned that the last time. So let's stand, let's give Pledge of Allegiance to our flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Father God, as we worship you on this Independence Day weekend, we praise you for giving us freedoms in this great country. We praise you for those that have fought so diligently to gain that freedom and to maintain it. And we thank you especially for that freedom that we have in your Son, Jesus Christ. It is in him that we are here to worship, and it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn, My Country, Tis of Thee. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims pride, from every mountain sun that freedom brings.
Amen. You may be seated. If you are well worshiping with us today, we welcome you. Thank you for coming and sharing some time with us in our worship time. I'm going to kind of combine the, the greeting one another and the children's message again this week because it just doesn't seem right just to skip over the greeting one another and, and go right to the children's message. So we're going to ask for participation from the audience. What freedom or freedoms are you especially thankful for? There are no right or wrong answers. If you have one, just blurt it out. Freedom to worship. We got two of them, so that must be pretty important, and I believe it is. What else? Freedom of speech. Freedom of job to choose an occupation. Yes, absolutely. Anything else? Freedom to vote. That's coming up in November. Hmm. It's kind of difficult, isn't it? It really is. I mean, you come up with those obvious ones, but yet we realize, we know, that we have many, many liber liberties, liberties and freedoms that we enjoy every day. The fact that we can go to bed at night and not worry about the military coming and barging into our homes. The fact that we can worship here and not worry about if there's going to be some guards come in or something. Okay, The way this world is going, I don't know how long that's going to continue, but we pray that God will continue to bless us with that. But we have so many freedoms, don't we? Kids, how many kids? Oh, there you are back there. All right. Has mom or dad ever said, go clean your room? Uh-huh. Do you think there's freedom in cleaning your room? Hmm. Not really, right? It doesn't seem like that's much of a freedom. That seems like it's a job. But we're going to talk this morning about how we have freedom through obedience. Freedom, freedom by actually doing something. By not just sitting back. So adults, what do you think the freedom is in having kids clean their room? Discipline, okay. Something that they don't see at the time, but as they grow older, they will understand that there is discipline. And that is important. Respect for authority. Learning to do things themselves. Anything else? How about this? If kids never cleaned their room, what eventually would happen? It'd be a mess, right? In most cases. Some kids, not so much. But if you have a son like we do in Nicholas, it would be probably piled up about that high after a while. And see, by keeping that room clean, you actually are keeping yourself safe, aren't you? See, there are so many blessings, there are so many freedoms that we have that we don't even realize. And so this Lord's Day, we're going to talk a little bit about freedom. Freedom for this country, for our state, and freedom in Jesus Christ. And that freedom came because Jesus died on an old rugged cross, and I believe that's our special music given to us by the Reed Oswegan family. So thank you for that this morning. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of 
How many of you listen to KWMT Fort Dodge? Anybody? We got a few. Dale Iker used to be on the midday show. He's on occasionally, and he would say it doesn't get any more country than that. Amen? Yeah. An old rugged cross. That's why we're here. This morning, our scripture comes from Psalm 115, and you might wonder, you might ask, what in the world is he doing reading from Psalms on Independence Day weekend? What does the book of Psalms have to do with our independence? And hopefully, by the grace of God, I will be able to point that out in the message that I have prepared this morning. So Psalm 115, before we read it, let's ask God to bless that reading to us. Father, as we open your word, come now by your power of your Holy Spirit, and open our hearts and minds. Tune us in to what you would have us to learn about freedom, true freedom. And we thank you because we know that freedom comes through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Psalm 115. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Why do nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven and he does whatever pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear. They have noses but yet they cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but they cannot walk. Nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will turn like them, and so will all those who trust in them. All you Israelites, trust in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people, O Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. May the Lord cause you to flourish, and you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. 
The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind for a while. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It is we who will exalt the Lord, both now and forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Larry, did you notice that I missed something this morning? Did you miss something in the early part of this? There was no joke, right? <laughs> ouch, 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 ouch. I may deserve that. Oh, my goodness. Now I did it. Oh, man. No, it's not. And that, hmm. Let's see if I can get it pulled back up. This is why I do not rely on electronics or today and that's not the one I wanted. Last week was um, Ackley Geneva's graduation and this isn't going to be right either and and the principal forgot the list of the names of the students <laughs> and I was listening to it on the radio and and he stumbled like I did and he goes just a minute I can find it on my phone and he's having the same problem as I did. And I really apologize. I had it all pulled up if I wanted to push the wrong button. Let's see if this is it. Please, please, please. Okay. Some of these I think you can relate to. This is Jeff Foxworthy, by the way. You might be from Iowa if... Your local Dairy Queen is closed from September through May. You might be from Iowa if at a Home Depot store someone offers you assistance in loading your van even though they don't work there. <laughs> you might be from Iowa if that same person shows up at your front door a few minutes after you arrive at home and offer to move it into the house for you. You might be from Iowa if you've worn shorts and, park, and a parka at the same time. You might be from Iowa if you've had a lengthy telephone conversation with someone that you dialed the wrong number to. You might be from Iowa if a vacation means going anywhere south of Des Moines for a weekend. You might be from Iowa if you measure the distance in square miles of farmland. You might be from Iowa if you've gone from the heat to the air conditioning and back to the heat all in the same day. You might be from Iowa if you can drive 70 miles an hour through a raging blizzard without flinching. You might be in Iowa if you install security lights on your garage but not your house. You might be from Iowa if you carry jumper cables in your car and your wife knows how to use them. You might be from Iowa if you design your kid's Halloween costume to fit over a snowsuit. You might be from Iowa if you are going over 70 miles an hour on Interstate 80 and everybody is still passing you. You might be from Iowa if it's better to drive in the winter because then the potholes are filled. You might be from Iowa if you know the four seasons are almost winter, winter, still winter, and road construction. You might be from Iowa if you have more hours on your lawnmower and snowblower than you do on your car. You might be from Iowa if you find that 10 degrees is a little bit chilly. You are definitely from Iowa if you understood these jokes and can relate to all of them. From Iowa. We are blessed to live in Iowa, aren't we? We really are. And I realize that Iowa has been the backside of many jokes. We have been called hicks and, and many other things. I understand that. But Iowa is special. And on our flag is this motto, our liberties we prize and our rights we will maintain. That motto was drafted by three of Iowa's early senators. And it became the state's motto at the first General Assembly back in 1847. Freedom, liberty, personal rights have been a mainstay not only of this state, but of the United States. Wars have been fought 
lives have been sacrificed, hardships have been endured, not only to gain this freedom, but to maintain it. But is that the real reason that we in America enjoy so many freedoms? Is that the reason that these freedoms have so long endured? And before I get into that matter, the matter of this morning's message, I want to make one thing very clear, and I, I've learned a lot of things from sitting in the pew over the years. And one of them is this. I've attended many services, many listened to many messages, and the pastor is trying to make a point. Okay? And in so doing, for some reason, he overlooks maybe the bigger picture, if you will. Okay? And I don't want that to happen this morning. And when I get into this, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. I don't want you to think or leave here this morning that I do not appreciate what the veterans have done for this country. I do not want you to leave thinking that our forefathers had nothing to do with the freedoms that we enjoy in this country today because they do. They have. They will endure. And I respect them greatly. I think you know that. It's called patriotism. And it's important. And this country has lost that perspective, in my opinion. They have lost it tremendously. We seem to find what's wrong with America. We seem to find at fault those that are around us, and we look for nothing to be good. And so I appreciate so much those of you that have served in our military those of you that might be listening on YouTube that may still be serving. And I thank you from my bottom of my heart. But what has caused America to drift off? Why is it that we would all agree that we seem to be losing our freedoms? Many other nations have had a great military presence, just like our great armed forces. Many have enjoyed little or no success because of it. They had a lot of funding. They had a lot of people. They had firepower. They had all those things that America had, but yet they did not ever seem to enjoy freedom. Oh, they may have had a, a glimpse of it. They may have had a few fine years, if you will, but eventually they drifted back. The chapters of Psalms from 115 to 118 were traditionally sung at the Passover meal commemorating the escape of Israel from slavery from Egypt. In this morning's text, the psalmist asked that the nation of, Ag of Israel not glorify itself, but give glory and praise and honor to God Almighty. He then ends with a verse with the reason that this should happen. And it is this. Because of God's love and faithfulness. Note in verse 2 that our countries, many nations around us, don't even know who God is. But we do, don't we? We know who our God is. We know who we are to trust and obey. And we know that God above knows us as well. In verse 3, that verse ends with these words, and he, God, does whatever he pleases. Sometimes I think we forget that. Sometimes we get so caught up in our everyday life that when things around us start to unravel, so it may appear, that we think that there is something that we must do or that our government must do or that our church must do. And I believe that there are times that people can step in and make the situation better. But ultimately, God's will will be done on this earth. God is in control. God is alive. God is real. The psalmist says those gods of other nations are not so. He says they have a mouth, but they can't talk. They have eyes, they can't see. They have ears, they can't hear. They can't smell, they can't feel, they can't walk. In Elijah's day in 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah calls upon God to perform a great miracle in the presence of pagan people. 
And God, of course, performs that miracle. And then Elijah says to those pagans, now call upon your gods and have them do the same. And of course they do, and they do, and they do, and nothing happens. And Elijah pokes fun at them and says, maybe you need to talk a little louder. Maybe your God is asleep. The psalmist says that those people who believe in those false gods, those idols made out of silver and gold or rock or wood, made with human hands, will end up just like their gods, dead. And then in verse 9, through the end of the chapter, the psalmist's focus turns to what a believer should do, must do, in order to receive the blessings and freedoms that God has made for us. The first, he says, and he says it over and over, trust in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. We need to remember that God is there to protect us, to help us. He wants to do that so badly. He wants us to trust in Him that He can. Secondly, the psalmist says we must fear God and give reverence and respect to Him in order for us to to maintain and enjoy freedom. As I said before, our country has veered off that course, hasn't it? Our forefathers were, many of them were Christians. When they they founded this country, it was of great importance to them. And God blessed us because of that. And in our day, there are very few that really revere the Lord God Almighty in our government. And then sometimes we wonder why God seems to have left us. The psalmist says we must obey God's decrees and His laws. Yes, there are requirements to abide by. You see, freedom is not free at all, is it? In order for us to receive and enjoy those freedoms that God has intended to us through His Son, Jesus Christ, We must trust, we must fear, and we must obey. Not to achieve that freedom or that salvation, but once we have secured it through Jesus Christ, then to do those things that we can enjoy all the benefits that Christ has for us. We ought not to think that we ourselves can save our own souls. We must remember that God alone can do that through Jesus Christ. But there are things that God has set for us to do. Things that He wants us to do. Things that He commands us to do. Like cleaning our room. In a sense. God says, I want you to obey me. I want you to come and worship me. And yes, we don't have to do that. We we can slough off on that. But after a while, our lives, the room of our heart fills up with junk and suddenly we're in a big mess. How do you view having to do things for God? How do you look at that work? I got this... This idea from Mavis Campman who led our Sunday school devotions while we were at Washington Reformed Church. And she said this, when we do things for God, we need to look at it in this manner. That we don't have to obey God, but rather that we have the privilege to do it. It's all in the way we look at it, isn't it? If we look at it as something that I've got to do, oh, I've got to go to church again today, or I've got to go out and and teach Sunday school, or I've got to go and and lead the youth group, or, or whatever it may be, then it's not freedom. But if we look at it as being a privilege, an opportunity to give back to God, then suddenly it is freedom, isn't it? I think the same can be said about our our jobs. Do we look at our job as something we have to do? Or do we look at it as something that God has given us the privilege to do? Hard work has never killed anyone. It's the attitude towards it. Now some of you who have baled hay or walked beans or did some of those other terrible jobs might say, well, it maybe didn't kill me, but it came awfully close. Right? 
But that is so. We, it's all on how we look at things. Do we trust and obey with a positive attitude? Or do we look at it as a hardship? God says these things. He guarantees these things. He says, I will remember you and I will bless you. It doesn't matter if you're great or small, short or tall. He says that I will increase you and your families. I have given you the earth to enjoy. And the psalmist closes as he began and he says, praise and honor to God forever. Praise to the Lord. America was founded upon fear of the Lord. For over 250 years, or over 200 years, He has blessed us. In the last 50, it seems as though those blessings become fewer and fewer. Not because God has left America, but because we have left God. This morning, I'd like to close with this that I found on Facebook this week. Freedom is what God gave us when He created us in His image. He gave us freedom to choose how we live. He gave us freedom to choose good or evil. He gave us freedom to choose love or hate. He gave us freedom to choose to follow Him or to ignore Him. He gave us freedom to choose how we treat those we love and those who hate us. He gave us freedom to accept His gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ or to deny it. All we have to do is choose. May we ourselves, may Americans today choose wisely. May we choose that freedom that He has given to us in His Son, Jesus Christ. May we come back to Him. May we give Him the glory and honor for everything that is good in this country. May we seek to see the good and not the bad. I know there's a movement out there and they seem to find out everything or bring up everything that is bad in America. Right? You know who I'm talking about. And there are many things in America that we don't agree with. There are many things that are going on that, that we just shake our heads at it and we're disappointed and we're disgusted with. But America is still the greatest place in God's green earth to live. I, I don't doubt that for a moment. But even more than that, how would you feel if God looked at you the way some people are looking at America and He nitpicked and He found every fault that you have and He brought it up over and over and over and over again? You're not good enough. You did this wrong. You did that wrong. You forgot to pray to, to me this morning. You didn't go to church last Sunday. You're a miserable wreck because that's what we are. But God doesn't do that, does He? He doesn't do that, not for an instant. In fact, He says, I want to go and search you out like that lost sheep. I want to go and wrap my arms of love around you and bring you back to the fold. I want you to be under my wing. And even though being under my wing means maybe that you can't go or won't go wherever you want, there is still freedom. Because I have loved you so much. And because of that love, there is freedom in obedience. Amen. Our hymn... is God of our fathers.
seated. As we again come now to that time when we pray and bring our praises and concerns to God, does anyone have anything they'd like to have shared this morning? Yes, Larry. Yep. I'm invisible. I can't beat COVID. I can party like a rock star. Yep. Just like Biden. Yep. And not only that, the the me idea that the world revolves around me, right? And if you don't think just like I do, then you need to change. Good point. Anything else or anyone else? So Bernie and Elaine's granddaughter, Lindsay, her boyfriend, drowned Friday night, right? At Lake Delhi. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to intervene here for a minute. We here at the Reformed Church of Stout have had some rough go, haven't we? And I think that's probably true wherever church you go to. We've got Kenny who is battling. We have Anna who is battling. We've had death and sorrow, and we're reminded that again this morning of Lindsay's boyfriend. How many of you believe that God answers prayer? How many of you believe that God answers prayer the way we think He should? Sometimes, right? Sometimes he does. And I was taught this a long time ago too, that God does answer prayer in three ways. He either gives it an affirmative yes. He says, not now. Wait a little while. My timing isn't your timing. Or he says, I have something better in mind. He never says no. Look at the positives. And I know when you're sitting there and you have a family member that is, is you know, struggling to beat all get out. Sometimes that's hard to understand and hard to accept. I've been there. I, I get it. But God never says no. Roger, we prayed for your uh, sister-in-law last week. Just last week, we prayed for her to be healed, right? And God answered prayer, didn't He? Not the way we thought or we had hoped maybe, but she's healed. God says, I have something better. I'm not going to heal her on this earth, but I have something better. As you go out and every day as you struggle, and I need to hear this just as much as you do, remember, God has a plan and He has something better in store than we can ever imagine. All right, enough of that before I get going on sermon number two. <laughs> Anything else? We are here. And I am so thankful how loyal you all are to come. And I know you're not coming for me because if you were coming for me, then probably not very many would come. Maybe my wife, I'd make her come. But You want to put a muzzle on it? <laughs> it was pretty good up until that one, Larry, but yeah. You had to do it. Okay. You should have said, look at all the weight we're saving, gaining weight, because we... That don't count. All right. Anything else? I'm glad that we can have fun together, right? I mean, yeah. Yes, Roger? Absolutely. I don't know either, and I'm not going to begin to, because I, I know what will happen. I'll, li I'll remember somebody, and then I'll forget somebody. There are so many things, seriously, that people do around the church that I never see it get done, but it gets done, and, and I'm thankful for that as well. Thank you. Anything else? Let's pray. Let's come together and pray to God Almighty. Father, we come before you and 
we are humbled because You have blessed us. You have loved us. You have given us so much. You don't look at the bad. You, you, you look at us as being Your sons and Your daughters. Lord, You could have given up on us. You could have thrown in the towel on us a long, long time ago and had every right to do so, but You didn't. And even more than that, You loved us so much that You gave us Your only Son to go through everything that He had to go through for us. Oh God, what freedom we have in You. And through that freedom, Lord, we are able to enjoy the freedoms of this great country, the United States of America. And I thank You for her today. I thank You for those that have fought for her. For those who continue to serve in our military. For our forefathers and our foremothers who worked this land to make it more enjoyable for us. To make it better for us. That You bless them, Lord, so very much. Lord, I thank You that we can come together this morning again and worship together. Yes, it's not what we're used to. It's not maybe what we had hoped for. But it is what You have given us. What You have saw fit to give us. And Lord, maybe You have something better in store for us that we just can't see. May You open our eyes and our hearts to, to see that, to understand that if it's Your will. And if not, Lord, keep us positive. Keep us thinking of the good. Give us the right attitude. And Lord, with that in mind, we bring these those that we love, those that we care about before You once again this morning. Lord, we are saddened by the death of Lindsay's boyfriend. What a shock. And Lord, there would be many who would say there is no good in that whatsoever. And Lord, it would be difficult even at this very moment to find any good in that but yet we know that You have a plan and that You are good all the time. Lord, just be especially close to Lindsay and all the family and all the friends that are hurting so bad this morning. Lord, bring comfort and peace to them. May they know that You love them and that You care about them even now. We again lift up Kenny, Lord, and he's had a rough time. Lord, I just pray that You will give him strength. That You will help his body to fight off the effects of the chemo. That You will allow the chemo to do its work in the proper way. And that it will help him heal the cancer. Lord, we think of Anna again this morning. Lord, for such a, a young child to have to go through so much. Lord, I just pray that You will be especially close to her and her family as they go through that together. Lord, may You help them to overcome the physical aspects of her problems, but also, also the mental ones. Those of, of her um, just being not understanding and all those things, all those questions. Lord, just grant Your peace to them. Lord, we pray for Roger's family and the loss of his sister-in-law. May You give them peace as well. We praise You, God, that she is in a better place. That she is with You, Lord, and she is enjoying now all those wonderful things that You have promised to those who believe in You. Lord, we think of Linda, Lord, as she is requesting prayer for some issues that she's had from past surgeries. Lord, may You give her comfort and strength and relief from the pain. Lord, again, we thank You that we live in this land May You protect our freedoms, Lord. As we come to an election in November, may You work in our lives and in our hearts to know who to vote for. Lord, give us Your will on who to vote for. Lord, we just pray for our occupations, another freedom that You have given us, Lord. Whether it be 
a job that is in an office or a job in school or whether it be a farmer or whatever it may be, may you bless us, Lord. Bless our families as well as we live together. May we grow closer to you. Lord, we pray especially for those who are shut in. We think again of Betty and of Carrie, of Harvey, of Eunice and of Fred, of Linda and of Lois, who has now been able to return to her home. home. Lord, we thank you for life. And we praise you for it. We praise you for the many years that you give us upon this earth. Lord, you are such an awesome God. You give and you give and you give. And yet we tend to complain. Change our, our thought process, Lord, right now. May we, as your scripture says, find praise and glory in everything that happens. Not that it's easy, not that it makes us feel good, not that it makes us laugh, but that we know that we are relying upon you. And in the end, all will be well. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the source of all freedom for those who believe in Him. Lord, we just pray that we would rely upon Him more and more every day. That we would be in Your Word. That we would pray. That we would meditate. That we would get to know our Redeemer as our very best friend. And we thank You, Lord, for that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again this morning, the offering plates are in the rear of the sanctuary for your convenience. At this time, let's stand for the doxology in our offertory prayer. praise you because all good comes from your hand everything that we have is yours yes our names may be on the title of a vehicle or on a parcel of land but ultimately it all belongs to you and you have given it to us you have shared it with us may we may we use them every gift wisely and lord the gifts that we bring to you now may you use them in the furtherance of your kingdom lord we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn, America the Beautiful.
benediction. And may God indeed shed his grace upon each and every one of you as you go forth from this place into the world this week. May you feel God's presence, his love, and his peace with you always. And all God's people said, Amen. Our closing chorus, God bless America.